All right, everybody. Well, uh, welcome to uh, Unit 4, Lesson 6. As usual, you're looking for the tasks to complete for U4L6. You can find it either under Assignments or on the uh, Canvas homepage on the weekly calendar. Today's date is December 2nd. Uh, rather than throwing you into breakout rooms to answer a question, uh, today I wanted to take some time to collect some feedback from you. I should have been doing this more regularly, uh, but I have a um, anonymous Google form that I would like you to complete. It's right there on the first task to complete. It's called the December 2020 Human AMP course feedback. I'm going to time for 10 minutes to get through this. Hopefully it won't take 10 minutes to do. Uh, we'll come back together once it looks like we've got responses from everybody here. Um, but please take your time. I appreciate honesty. Again, it's completely anonymous. Um, just want to know what your thoughts have been uh, about class recently. Give it a go. Let me know if you need help. Um, to refer to. Uh, the other homework was the reading quiz from Hall, Hall, um, yeah, Hall chapter 6.4. Uh, again, looking good here in terms of statistics, seeing a couple answers that are a bit off. Um, very torn on this question, actually. So let's take a look at this. So which spinal nerve plexus sends nerve signals to and from the skin and muscles of the arm and hand? That is going to be the brachial not the cervical. So cervical is going to be your shoulders and neck, uh, upper body. Brachial is arm and hand. Um, um, on, on the quiz, you put cervical. Oh, as yes. Answer. You're right. You're yeah, right. I have to go through like four. Like four yeah, I, got, I was like, I was like looking at my notes <laughs> and I was like, it's like, it's, I don't know. <laughs> yes. So sorry. That is my fault. That is not your fault. Uh, I had the uh, incorrect right answer there. So I will go change that. Uh, might as well go change it right now. Um, I apologize for that. That's the second time my previous class too, I had them working through a quiz and they made all kinds of little automatic grading mistakes. Uh, so let me know again if you're working through quizzes again today and you notice any of that. It's just annoying. Uh, okay, let's see. Most cranial nerves uh, sends nerve signals to the skin. Uh, that was this one. If you guys ever wondered what the quizzes look like on the construction end, here they are. Uh, so sorry, the correct answer should have been brachial. Uh, I'm going to award both points to both correct. So everyone gets points. So that was my mistake. All right, that should be fixed. Sorry about that, kiddos. Um, all right, but otherwise looking good. Um, and I'm hoping that those drawings clarified a little bit of the reading. I feel like the reading doesn't do the best job of tying it all together. Uh, in terms of like the plexuses and how they relate to the sections of the spine. So that's why I had us do those drawings. Um, any questions or comments on those assignments? Okay, uh, then next on the list is actually going to, th I'm going to throw you into breakout rooms to work on the next task, um, which is step number three, cranial and nerve, uh, spinal nerves review. So you'll need to have both of your drawings ready to refer to. And I made just a short quiz. I think it's about, um, seven questions uh, with three free response the rest of multiple choice uh, based on the drawing should be straightforward. I'm going to throw you into breakout rooms with a partner and I would really like it if you could do kind of a reader timer thing that I, that we've done I think before or I used to do with Pogles. Uh, so one person is going to be the reader. You're going to read out loud the instructions and the questions so your partner can follow along. Timer, you're just keeping track of time. I'll blast an announcement to all the, the breakout rooms once you've settled. And um, But your role is also to make sure you've both answered the question on your own quizzes before you move on to the next one, right? You are working together on that. So go ahead and open up that quiz and get ready. Have your drawings to refer to. Breakout rooms are open. And again, I'll make a time announcement once you've uh, settled in. I'll be here listening to say if you have questions or something like that, you can drop back into the main room. Go for it. As to why they are able to stay alive even though they've technically lost control of the lower part of their body. You had to look at both drawings for this. Look at your brain one in particular. There's, you know, the, the, the brain, the, the cranial nerves definitely all feed to things in the head, but there's one exception. Does anyone see what's the one exception? Yeah, right. the uh, vagus. Yeah. So your vagus nerve, uh, this is the link, uh, Keone mentioned this link wasn't working on the, um, 
task to complete, which is okay. I just put this up here just to show you, but hopefully you can see it right here. This is just from Pinterest or something. Um, but your vagus nerve is a nerve that goes from your brain to your major organs, your heart, your lungs, your digestive system, and it doesn't go through the spinal cord. Super fascinating. Uh, and so this is why people who break their necks are able to stay alive and are able to still eat, and digest their food, their heart still beats, their breathing. Some people do have some assistance. They have machines that do help with a lot of this because a lot of blood flow and stuff too has to do with muscle movement. So they need help with that aspect. Um, but otherwise, you know, this was something I'd always wondered about was, you know, what do they have machines that beat their heart, machines that keep them breathing? But no, it's just that the, that nerve bypasses the, the major highways that go through the spinal cord, which Again, from an evolutionary standpoint, I'm super curious about exactly how that evolved or why. I mean, I guess it's just one of these things where like, this probably existed before vertebrates became a thing, right? So you had the evolution of a brain and nerves connecting to the major organs, and then the spinal cord was sort of a later addition in, in the evolutionary timeline, and this nerve didn't get integrated with it. Um, anyway, it's kind of funny, kind of fun to think about. So uh, any questions or comments on that um, quiz or on the drawings? Alrighty, uh, the next topic then is injuries and disorders of the nervous system, which we'll kind of keep touching on over the next couple lessons, I think. Uh, but I wanted to start off with the injury or disorder that I think would be most relevant to people your age, since a lot of you are athletes. Anyone want to know what we're going to talk about? Concussions. Concussions are a big uh, brain injury, and especially in this modern era too, we're starting to see a lot of that. And so I have a little flip grid where you're gonna be using an egg to simulate a brain inside a skull uh, and shaking it around a little bit to see what happens. Um, so on Canvas, as usual, I've got instructions and a demonstration video. So we're on tasks to complete step number uh, four right now, injuries and disorders in the nervous system. So there's a link to the concussion flip grid, uh, the assignment. Uh, again, there's a link to a demonstration video. There's instructions. And again, all you need is a jar, water, and a raw egg. Um, you can use Tupperware or Mug too. I've got a demonstration video on the flip grid itself as well. If you don't have eggs at home, you don't have access to that, it's okay. You don't have to do this right now. I have a um, Ed puzzle that you can work on as an alternative. So if you don't have an egg at home, then I want you to work on this Ed puzzle, which is why don't woodpeckers get concussions. Um, it's a pretty entertaining Ed puzzle um, that you can check out. Uh, so again, I'm going to time for about 15 minutes, I think, to uh, work through this, and then we'll come back together to uh, review. Hopefully that'll be enough time to, uh, to piece all that together. So go for it. Let me know if you have questions or need help or can't find anything. the front and then it acts it's supposed to act as a seat belt for the brain a seat belt tongue yeah and mm -hmm. then also their brain is really small so that's why and then they could also take more force and they're like meant that's like woodpecking is like what they're meant for so technically their bodies are meant for that and like Versus humans, we get concussions easier because we aren't meant to be headbutting things. Yes, we are. We are not evolved for for doing a lot of the activities that we currently do. But very good. I would say one of the key things you have the seatbelt tongue in very small size. Like you just can't get the momentum to have significant damage. There was one more thing about the orientation of the brain uh, in woodpeckers. It. Um, uh huh. Uh. uh like what? Like how like would you describe? Angled. It's angled like this, like the bottom of the brain is angled like this. So when it hits the side of the tree, um, it's, what's that word? Like it distributes the force. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's distributed against more air. Have any of you ever seen those weird tricks where like the, the person lies down on a bed of nails? Anyone seen that before? So you, you'll see some people do this sometimes. You can watch videos of it where it's a, it's a whole bed of nails and some people lie down on it and you're like, oh my gosh. But the reason that works is because your weight is distributed across all of those nails. So there's no certain point that's going to press in, right? The trick is getting up and getting off of it. Um, but if you were to suddenly just put all your weight on one foot on a bed of nails, they would go right through. And so it works a similar way with woodpeckers. The flat part of their brain is directly in, uh, um, perpendicular to their bill. And so, yeah, the brain is impacting this wide 
space and it distributes the force. Anyway, really cool. Yes, they are highly evolved for what they do, um, which is pretty cool. Okay, um, one last thing I wanted to do. I wanted to let you work on a ed puzzle that is all about concussions. This is on um, the last task to complete, step number um, five here. Uh, let's go ahead and click on the concussions ed puzzle. If you can't get the ed puzzle to work, I do have a link to the original video as well. I'm trying to remember how long this is. Gosh, I hope it was less than 10 minutes. Oh, okay, it's five minutes, 50 seconds. So you should have plenty of time to work through that. Um, so kind of interesting again, just about concussions and what happens when you get multiple concussions. Uh, so give that a go and we'll touch back together once everyone's done.